Okay, so this is the second tutorial. I'm now going to show you how to create a basic form uh, where the user of the app uh, inputs data, uh, such as the names of different things, and then the app uh, does a little bit of validation, so it checks that the things that they've entered is okay. Okay, so I'm just going to need one other screen for this one. I'm going to call it success. And then uh, the screen one is going to where is going to be where they input the data, and then if everything's okay, it's going to go to screen two and it's going to show them the data that they input. Okay, so for this, I need a couple of text fields so that they can type in, and also I need a button, and this time it's going to be a submit button. So just like in the last tutorial, I'm now going to name all of the components I've just added with suitable variable names. So what they're going to do is they're going to input the name of an item. So item name input and they're going to put in uh, a picture URL picture URL input and they're going to put their username in so username input and I think that's it for now and I'm also going to add some labels so so that the person understands what they are typing in I'm going to add some labels. So this one is going to be item name label. This one's going to be picture URL label. And this one is going to be username label. Okay. So now, just like the last one, I'm going to change some properties about these. So I'm going to say the first one item name. And the hint is going to be enter the name of your item. This is going to be picture URL. Where is the picture of your item? And this is going to be username and text. Uh, enter your username, something like this. Okay, so now I have three text fields, three labels, <coughs> and one button that's going to be submit information. Okay. Um, so now it's kind of on to the scripting part, so I'm going to switch into blocks view, and then the thing that is going to trigger this script to happen is if they try and submit the details that they've put in. Okay, so what I'm going to do is use this when submit button clicked. I now need to find a way to get the text from the different elements. So I need to get the text out of item name, out of picture URL, out of username. So to do that, you need to look for the specific components on the left hand side and go to where they are and find this one. So item name input.text, that will represent whatever text is inside uh, the text field called item name input. I'm doing the same for picture URL, and now I'm going to do the same for user. Okay, so these need connecting to things, and what I'm going to do now, because I need to check that these things um, are in a certain way, so I'm going to use an if statement, just like I would in Scratch, just like I would in Python, and I'm going to need to do a logical expression that checks something about uh, the data. So what I'm going to use is this one, which is not equal to, and what I'm saying is if the text in the item name input is not blank, so I'm going to take an empty text element and put it in here, then we can continue to the next test. Okay, so now I'm just going to duplicate my if statement and put it here. So if I've got to the next test, I can now do the same, but this time with the username. Okay, so it's kind of following the format. Once you have one, just copying it, looking for those patterns. I'm going to do the same again with the picture URL. Okay. So if I get to this point, I'm going to do one more check just to show you. So the item name is fine, the user's input, uh, the username input is fine. But with a picture URL, so what a URL is, is where an image is stored. So for example, if I go to Google Images and type in cat and say I want to use this image, I click this one, view image, and the thing that comes at the top, that's the URL. This is where the image is located on this website server. Okay, 
what a URL has to have in order to work is actually a prefix. So Google Chrome misses this out for you, but you actually need to have this. So HTTP colon slash slash, otherwise App Inventor and the app isn't going to be able to retrieve the image from their server. Um, so I'm going to do one last check just to make sure that um, this time I'm not going to check for inequality. So I'm not using this, but I'm going to look for... Um, I'm going to look in my text section and I'm looking to find this one, contain. So this is the equivalent of the in operator in Python. So I'm checking for the presence of one string uh, in another string. So I'm checking whether um, my text, which is the text that I'm getting from my picture URL input text field, and I need to check whether it contains that vital um, prefix for the web URL. So it must have in it HTTP colon slash slash. Okay, if I get to this point, then it's been successful. So what I can do is uh, display a message. Um, for this, I'm going to use a notification component. So I'm just going to add one more thing. And I'm going to get this one, which is a notifier. Okay, and drag it on the screen. And I'm just going to call it notification. Okay. Um, so now I'm going to go back to blocks. If my code has passed these four tests, so the username input is not blank, and the item name input is not blank, and the picture URL input is not blank, and the picture URL contains the HTTP prefix, then what we can do is set the notification to show a positive message. So I'm going to scroll down now and find, uh, so all I need is uh, an alert like this, and I can say, again getting a text element, and what can I say, um, submit, submission was successful, something like that. However, now I need to deal with the circumstance of one of these tests failing. So this is where I need to add the else clause to my if statement. So if you click this little kind of blue uh, settings button, for each of the conditional statements, you can also add an else. So you drag the else over like this, and I'm going to do the same for each of them. Drag. The reason why we want an else statement to pair with each if statement, this is the best way to show the user descriptive error messages so they can kind of perfectly understand what has gone wrong. Um, so I'm going to do this and it's going to be the same thing again, but I'm going to get the notification. But this time I can change the text. So again, it looks confusing once it's finished, but it's actually a lot of repetition. You're just looking for these patterns and copying what you've already done using duplicate. Okay, so this one is picture URL cannot be left blank. Uh, this one is going to be um, image uh, picture URL must begin with HTTP colon slash slash. Okay, this one is going to be Username field cannot be left blank. And this one is item name field cannot be left blank. So the last thing I want to do in this tutorial is if we've got to this point, you can see where my mouse is, the submission has been successful. And then what we can do is uh, move to our next screen, which is like this. And this enables us to, um, well, we're not going to be able to show the data yet. We'll learn that in the next tutorial because we need to be able to write it to a database to be able to do that. But what we can do is switch to the screen called success that I made at the beginning. And now just quickly, when I go to success, what happens is when, uh, so looking for the screen on the left hand side, so I'm looking for initialize, so when the screen first loads up, um, what I will do is, so I'm just going to add one more uh, label on here, 
I'm just going to leave it as label one for now. I'm just going to delete this. So it, it starts off with nothing on it. And the color is going to be green. I'm going to set the font size to 36. And all I'm going to do is make it so that when we get to this page, we set the text of the label to the word success. Okay, so what you have is two screens, one with some text fields, a submission button, and a notification component. And what this is doing is it's checking whether each of the fields has been filled in, or making sure that each of the fields has been filled in, and then just checking that the picture field has to have the kind of web address prefix at the start. If all of those things evaluate to true, what the app is able to do is show the success message and then switch to the success screen. So I'm going to have a look now to test what we've done. I uh, just need to reconnect. I'm going to press reset. This is the bit that tends to take quite some time. I'll press emulator now. Okay, so now it's loaded up, so let's test. So I've got three fields and a submit button. So now if I leave them all blank and try and submit, what it should say to me is that the first one uh, has encountered a problem. Yeah, item name cannot be left blank. So I'm going to type in cat. And now if I submit, it should give me a problem with the username because that was the second one that we did. So my username is going to be Mr. Fall 2016. Done. So now the final thing is, it should say the picture URL, cool. Okay, so now if I try and do something like this, so cat.jpg, it should spot that that's not a, a real web URL, so we should get this error. Picture URL must begin with HTTP slash colon colon. So what I'm going to do instead is put in uh, well a valid format URL, so something like www.cats.com forward slash cat1.jpg. And now because this string has the HTTP prefix, uh, all of our validations should pass. And then when I press submit, submission was successful. It should now take me to this next page. And we get this success.